Prairie Yard and Garden is a production of the University of Minnesota Morris in cooperation with Pioneer Public Television. Funding for Prairie Yard and Garden is provided in part by Heartland Motor Company, providing service for over 30 years in the heart of truck country. Heartland Motor Company, we have your best interest at heart. Farmers Mutual Telephone Company and Federated Telephone Cooperative, proud to be powering ASIRA. Mark and Margaret Yako Jolene, in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHill.org. Tom and I live in a great neighborhood. Most of us have gardens and lots of flowers, too. One of the best things about living among plant lovers is we watch out for each other's plants. When one family goes on vacation, a neighbor is willing to water, especially on the hot and windy days of summer. Well, imagine having pretty plants in your yard that don't need much care, even on the hot and windy days we often get. I'm Mary Holm, host of Prairie Yard and Garden, and let's find out more about these pretty and low care plants. Last August, I attended a seminar on making succulent containers. The room was full of people, and Kelly of Kelly's Cottage Garden near Park Rapids, Minnesota, brought and showed the most beautiful containers and dish gardens. After the class, she was just surrounded, but I managed to kind of squeeze in and get her contact information. And sure enough, when I called, Kelly agreed to show all our viewers how she does her wonderful creations. Thanks so much, Kelly. Well, thanks, Mary, for coming. Tell us, how did you get started doing um, these beautiful succulent gardens and containers? Okay. Well, I will tell you that my business here is kind of a hobby gone wild. <laughs> and I first started by do with working with annual plants and hanging baskets. And we used to go to greenhouses all over and gather lots of different flowers, and my other second passion back in the day was Martha Stewart magazine. So in one of her editions, she had how to prepare a hanging moss basket. I actually prepared a moss basket and decided that I needed to have a greenhouse somehow. They were so beautiful that it was something that other people had never done before. So I went from greenhouse to greenhouse asking about how to get started and in 2004 I actually ended up with my very first greenhouse and I did custom work out of that greenhouse making hanging moss baskets and by 2007 we had built another greenhouse which is where we are right now Kelly's Cottage Garden. We went from making hanging moss baskets and in about probably I'm going to say 2014 I dipped into the succulent arranging and have not been able to stop since. There are all these beautiful different colors and textures, and it's just easy to start getting your hands wet with that. So that's kind of how we started. What actually do you mean by succulent plants? Succulent plants are plants, well, they are desert plants. They're plants that hold a lot of water in their leaves, so you don't have to water them all the time. For many gardeners, they're a lot easier to grow than flowers, as you don't have to worry about them so much. They hold water in their leaves, and they're just easier to plant into soil and to make look good from day one. Now, what kind of containers do you use when you are making your, um, your succulent containers? Okay. What do you look okay. for? 
Well, we like to go out antiquing and look for lots of different vintage containers. You know, like this is something that I found at an antique shop, I believe, or maybe a friend dropped it off in the greenhouse. And as you add the succulents to this rusty metal, that just creates a beautiful arrangement. You know, it's fun to put all different colors and varieties into this piece. I have many containers. The terracotta pot is a beautiful piece to, to arrange succulents in as it's it kind of when terracotta pots get retain moisture they tend to get mossy mm. and it has that old look for some reason to me succulents and old go together so we like i like to mix them mary i have to share with you that i have found lots of different containers when we're out shopping and one of the fun little things that i found recently are these metal x and o makes a great gift but it's just the metal gets rustier as you go on and you can do lots of different succulent cuttings in these in different colors to make a great gift item or something for your porch these are kind of in right now you can also hang them hang them up and it's just they're just super cute you just flip the x and the o over and fill great creation another thing that we created tim and i at, at, at the greenhouse here is a succulent birdhouse with a nice roof so that we can plant the inside was succulents, and it's the most unique living garden, enjoyable all summer long. We actually have large ones and small ones. And the fun thing about birdhouses or other wood products is that you can paint them, and it kind of makes the succulent color stand out, the succulent colors and the textures. How did you make that cute uh, decoration on the front? These are just things that we pick up, you know, as we're out shopping. It's kind of like once you get an eye for what you're looking for, so either antique shops or just out there shopping. Just different things to kind of just make your birdhouse stand out. Another really cool thing to look for when you're out shopping, when you're thinking of succulents, is old vintage toys. They're just colorful and rusty and totally make succulents completely pop. This truck right here that I have, I have filled with a lot of different varieties of succulents. And as it grows, it's just different colors stand out and it's just a great piece to have. I also um, create succulent wreaths using all sorts of different succulent cuttings and they're absolutely beautiful. You can use them for a centerpiece, you can hang them on the door, great gifts, unique gifts and you know wreaths will last a long time. Some people can keep them up for up to two years or you can take apart your wreath in the spring and make it into a dish garden and then put it back together. You bet. Bird cage is another thing. Oh, for heaven's sake. These, we try to make about four of these a year use, using metal bird cages, but we use our sphagnum moss and we just kind of wring out our moss and build our bird cage as we go. We also have, I mean, I could just go on and on. We have succulent chair that we've created here, a succulent lamp that we've created here, and then all sorts of spheres where you just go around the whole sphere to create a unique, fun piece for your patio. On these containers, there's not very much area for soil. What right. kind of soil do you use? I use, actually, in my greenhouse, I basically use the greenhouse soil that I have, and it works well for me. You can purchase cactus soil, and I do sometimes use that also, but I don't find that I need to worry about the soil that much. How do you keep the soil from falling out and washing out? Well, when we're doing a succulent birdhouse, the step one is that we take this birdhouse here and we pack it completely with soil. And I'm not talking about just pouring your soil in lightly. We pour it, put the soil in, and then we pack it down, and then we pack it down again. And then what I do is I take a hose and I use the shower nozzle and just lightly go back and forth and let it, the water soak in. That's kind of step one. And then step two is I put the succulents into the birdhouse. I actually strip a lot of the soil off the, the plants, and I use a scissors or a diblet or whatever it is to build my succulent roof and then I let the, let the birdhouse sit for probably a week to 10 days for it, so that it can root in. And after it's rooted in, then I don't worry so much about the water. Then the plants are strong in your birdhouse and it should be fine. I use long fiber sphagnum moss. I, this is my lifeline here at Kelly's Cottage Garden. I use this for absolutely everything. And it's kind of, to me, I always call it, it's like flower glue. It's like when you're doing something and you just need something to be setting in a certain way, you just wet your moss and you know place it into a container and it will just prop or do whatever you want it to do. I always recommend everybody has one bale of this. Okay. When it comes to a dish garden or you know something like this, 
it's fine from the minute you plant it. Oh. You know, they and they actually they love to get into the soil and the colors will start to pop and it just makes a beautiful container quickly. It's kind of another thing about succulents that's nice versus a plant is you can load this up with different succulent plants and give it for a gift within one day and it's going to look good. I do fertilize in the greenhouse we fertilize all the time, but when I bring my plants to my home, mm -hmm. once a week for sure, and succulents like fertilizer too. Sure. I use the, the fertilizer that you mix with water. I just find that it's easiest. Okay. In the greenhouse I have it, it's very simple for me to do versus at home. At home actually I just kind of take a little pinch of fertilizer and mix it into like a two gallon pitcher and just start going around to everything. When people take and put their succulent containers outside, should they put them in the sun or in the shade? What kind of exposure do you recommend? Well, all succulents actually thrive in both sun and shade, which is actually kind of fun for people that have shady spots. They, succulents basically do need about six hours of light a day, I mean, in the key environment. But I have many people actually that come here that get succulent spheres and hang them in their dark shade areas. So I've had a little bit of experience just seeing the difference between sun and shade. And one of my customers actually brings her spheres back in the fall and they're absolutely beautiful. And they've been hanging in the shade. So and my answer to that one is kind of rusty because I actually think they go everywhere. Some of them of course thrive better you know, in sun and in shade, but as a whole, they can go in either place. Do you divide any of your succulents? Because I know yes. that you must use yes. oodles of them. Yes. So um, how do you do that? Well, the great thing about succulents is that they make babies very often, so you can propagate your succulents very easily. I'll give you an example right here. I have this mother plant is kind of what I call it, and you can see all the babies that are coming on. Okay, into this sure. into this plant. So before I use this plant in a project, I'm going to take cuttings of it and look what happens. There's three more and aren't they beautiful? Yes. Now, how long does it take to get from the little tiny shoots? Okay, until... to this point? Yes. Actually, probably a couple months okay. is basically what it takes. And there's all sorts of plants that you can propagate. You know, I'll show you like um, this kiwi is a very good example. See all the little pups on here? Uh -huh. We can cut those off and actually stick them into another project and it will just add color and texture. Just this little cutting and yes it will go. Do you have some favorite ones that you like to use? Yes, yes I do. Okay. Actually um, the string of pearls is a beautiful succulent that hangs down and it kind of looks like peas. I love to use this on the edge of projects. This is actually a succulent that does require a little bit more water. So I do tend to like water him a little bit more. I can also take cuttings of this guy by just taking, you know, taking a little cut right there and pinning it into the project. So string of pearls, absolutely. And the one I just held up, kiwi. This is, I, I try to get as many as these as possible in the spring because they have the beautiful pink edges and then the lighter centers, and they just add so much personality to your planters. This is called Pink Frills, oh. and it's just so beautiful. It's beautiful in wreaths, it's beautiful in spheres, even just this alone, you know, it's just a nice talking point. Another one that is a kind of a must have would be this um, sedum that just adds this bright color of yellow and kind of highlights whatever it is that you're doing. You can see like when you put it next to this purple color, wow. how it just makes it pop. Mm -hmm. You can see how I have a fun ordering these plants because honestly, there's so many different succulents and you don't know what you're going to get. So it's so fun to open the boxes in the spring. <laughs> Yeah, and I can't get to other greenhouses, so I don't even know what's out there. So I'm careful to order as many different kinds as I can. This is called um, fire sticks, or it's called many different names, but that's what I call it. Beautiful texture on this guy, and you can cut this and put it into, like if you were going to do your birdhouse or whatever, put it in the top to kind of add that orange and yellow look. So that's a great one. Um, aeoniums are beautiful in all the different varieties. This happens to be a black one with this beautiful green color on the inside. These guys get tall. String of bananas. This one is a new one for me this year and it just gets thick and it's got all these little bananas and you know it's just kind of fun in hanging baskets. This is a Pacveria that I absolutely love. This will be going into one of my own window boxes. Okay. It's just the beautiful purple tones in this guy mm -hmm. and you can see the fat leaves that are holding the water. Love. Okay, and I'm just gonna do like two more. This jelly bean is what I call this sedum jelly bean. 
beautiful, gets thick, green, and then it turns red with the heat. Oh. Yes, great cuttings. And then probably one of my go-to plants, and I think everybody should have one of these, is just the Pearl Wine Nuremberg. It's just a purple, but it highlights green in such a great way. Just a great plant. So Mary, I could probably go on for 20 <laughs> minutes on my favorite succulents because they all are. Okay. So we'll stop there. <laughs> well, I noticed that some of these um, add height yes. to an arrangement and some add a lot of color and, and enhance the other things. So you've got a huge selection of things that you can put together. Absolutely. Do you ever offer classes on making yes. planters? Yes. Okay. That's something that in the last couple of years I've, I've gotten more into because it's so fun to teach other people how to use succulents and make arrangements. So we, I actually go out and talk to groups about plants and we all share information in those talks about you know all of our different favorite things. We also, I have a, a vertical garden class that I do here and I do travel and do some classes. And we actually have a class of making the succulent birdhouse, which has been very popular. And we just keep, you know, talking to people about plants. It's fun once you gather a group of people around a table and start the plant conversation. It's amazing to see how much fun people have. So I really do enjoy doing that and like to get out there. Usually our classes are in March and April and then go to June because May is kind of a crazy month here. But if you can get your project started in March and April, you're going to end up with a great piece to hang after Memorial Weekend. Okay, that makes sense because by then they've had a chance to get yes, rooted in and fill yes. in and everything, so that's awesome. Absolutely. Would you be willing to actually show us how to put together and make a succulent garden? Absolutely. I have a question. Whenever we go to the Arboretum, I'm so impressed with your annual bed design. What recommendations or what process do you use for someone like me to plant an annual bed? Each year I, I try to come up with a different color theme so I, over the year before, I, I try to look for ideas and eventually the color theme comes to me. So that, And once it does come to me then I'm able to select a theme that will help me reduce the number of choices and therefore I can make a, a very beautiful design. And this particular year, uh, I'm using uh, primary colors plus pops of orange. One of the th things that I, helps me really a lot in laying out or deciding on my plants is to use cutouts of pictures uh, out of catalogs. Uh, I, I do not do things. I do things more the old-fashioned way with a notebook and and, and maps, and, and I, I use cutouts to help me and make decisions on how to combine things well. At the Arboretum, I do all the displays that match that, that design, and each year the tulips, the spring displays, and the summer will coordinate and match. Throughout the ground, you'll notice these displays vibrantly showing their evidence. Ask the Arboretum Experts has been brought to you by the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum in Chanhassen dedicated to enriching lives through the appreciation and knowledge of plants. Mary, I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite dish gardens using one of these terracotta pots. Um, I, like I said earlier, I love this pot because it grows a little bit of moss on it, so it looks a little bit of rustic. So step one is find your favorite pot. After that, I'm going to fill my pot up with soil, with as much soil as I possibly can making a little mound on the top. Really? This kind of this kind of shows instant gratification when it comes to a project. It just looks a little bit more finished than when you flatten your soil on your garden, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack my soil in very tightly, and you see it's, it's still kind of a little bit loose. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Okay, oopsie. So that soil kind of fills my whole container, but you can see there's just there's that little mound. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to start with all of my favorite plants that I've chose today. <laughs> now this little seed on this yellow one is going to create a nice pop in the front. And I always tell people when they're planting this guy, you kind of have to strip the soil off so that your sedum doesn't fall apart. Okay. And what I do is I take my scissors and I just kind of dig a little bit of hole, a, a little bit of a hole right here, and place my succulent. Okay. Now you see how it's created that nice mounding 
look into my container. Mm -hmm. Next, as I look at this, I'm going to think maybe we need something high in the middle that's colorful that kind of plays off this color. So that's where my kiwi comes in. And again, I'm going to strip all of the soil off of my plant. And I do even sometimes dig into the plug if I need to, just so that it's a nice small size. And then I'm going to put this kiwi right in here. I plop it down pretty deep so that it will stay. And then I pack the soil up so that it's sturdy right there. And if I wanted to, I could be taking cuttings off of this kiwi right here, you know, to spread the love a little bit and put it, plopping it maybe right into my sedum right there for another look. And yes, that's going to grow. Okay. That neat? Yes, it is. Next, I'm going to take this, this is called Calico Kitten and it's another trailer. Beautiful. It has like little patchwork leaves. Beautiful. So I'm going to put that over on this side here. Just clear a little spot and just go. And basically, this is, I kind of can see how I'm starting and I just build from here. So I'm, I'm thinking that I need a little dark green texture with these little waxy jelly beans is what I call them. So I just strip the soil off nicely here and to put my little hole in. And you can see how easy this is to just kind of build up. Gives you some go. height there yep, too. Height. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now I chose this this huge pink pink frills because this is a you know one of these beautiful plants that is just going to totally make a complete pop. It's going to look great from the start, and it's going to fill my garden nicely. So again, I'm kind of clearing the soil off, and I'm going to turn my my planter around right here, and I'll show you how I just kind of pop him in. And he's going to kind of be my main number one succulent. Usually when you're doing a, a dish garden, it's nice to do maybe one big one in a lot of different other sizes because it just kind of shows that pop of color. Gives you a focal point. Absolutely. And in this container, you never know how many plants you're going to need. You know, you don't have to fill it completely up with succulents from the beginning. But I am one of those people that like to have instant gratification, <laughs> so I do fill them up. And this will be a dish garden that I can take cuttings from all summer long and, you know, build another birdhouse or, um, you know, do whatever it is that I might want to do. Remember, this is the one that we took the cuttings from earlier, uh -huh. so I'm going to take this out. And now I have three new plants here. And they're just a nice color mm -hmm. with the red tips right there. And I'm just, sometimes you just have to drill your little finger there, place him here, and maybe I'll put one on the other side. And I, I see my planter is filling out nicely. So I'm probably just about done here. And what I can do in the end, let's, let's say that I ran out of succulents. Here I probably never will run out of succulents. <laughs> but if this is all I had, I could actually top it off with some cute rocks you know, just to kind of add a little bit of the elements of the ground. So there's some, you know, just a few little rocks. And then what I would, you know, if we could keep going with this, I might walk around and look for other plants that I might have just to um, take more cuttings and put little guys in here. Because I believe this has enough large plants, but it might be fun to pop some um, different cuttings in. And these are just basic rocks that I have found and then sometimes it's fun to put, you know, little, some little peat rocks in there and just go with it. See how easy that is? You can actually, when it comes to putting these little rocks in, just take a piece of paper and roll it up and then just put, place your rocks in, into your paper and just kind of spread it around. Okay, using almost okay. like a funnel to yeah. put them right into place. Absolutely. So this kind of shows the beginning of a dish garden. You can always add more, but this is going to be beautiful. It you know, is and beautiful look at that right pink now. frills. It is. It is. It is. So this is this will sit on on your deck all summer long, and you basically give it a drink of water once a week, and that is it. This is a dish garden, but what about these beautiful spheres. hanging spheres that you make? How do you keep your soil in there? Well, let me share with you. This is one of our spheres here. This is like an empty sphere, mm -hmm. and it, what I do is I put a, a black piece of landscape fabric in the bottom of the sphere, and then what I'm going to do is that long fiber sphagnum moss we were talking about earlier, which mm -hmm. is fabric glue. What I do is I take this moss right here. And you've wetted it. And I've wetted it in water, and I just let it soak. 
what we're going to do is I just get my hands in here somehow and I always tell people you have to be patient calm and in a very good mood <laughs> and at peace when you're doing this because these things can be a little tricky and you don't always want to you know don't give up if it doesn't work out the first time but what I'm doing in here is I'm creating a blanket of sphagnum moss on the bottom and I'll just kind of do it on the on the one side here mm -hmm. so here's moss that's right there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my succulent choices that I've made and again I'm going to you know take all the soil off of this I'm going to place my succulent into the sphere and I kind of get my plant so that it's behind that wire and this can be kind of messy and then my moss is going to hold that plant in. Do you add soil to that at all? Yes. So as I'm building, because what we're going to do is we will be doing this all the way around the whole sphere. Okay. And when I get around to the, the bottom, what I'm going to do is I actually I pour the soil from my succulents into the top. Sure. So what we do is we just take a great mix of different colors and varieties of succulents, probably 20 to 30, and go all the way up to this ball, and you're going to end up with a beautiful sphere just like this. And by the end of summer, they are absolutely beautiful. And I'm just going to tell you that you can do this with, I mean, these wire spheres, you can do this with a wire basket. There's so many different things you can do. You could use, instead of succulents, you could just do flowers. The sky's the limit. That's kind of how I started this whole business, was knowing that moss is flower glue and the wire spheres of any shape, you know, make it, make a place for your opportunity to make whatever it is that you want to design. So you can actually even use kind of anything to make containers and to make the succulent Absolutely. containers. Absolutely. Like I said, all you need is one bale of long fiber sphagnum moss. Let me show you, like, like here's a string of bananas, which is absolutely a great, you know, bottom of the sphere plant. Uh -huh. And so I just kind of place that in there again, like that. And then you pour your soil in over the top where yep. you have the moss, yep. and then you add more moss and just work your way up to Absolutely. the top. Absolutely. So there's that right there. Wow. And yes, I'm, that's what I do is I just kind of pour my soil just like that. And by the time you're done, you just have this huge formation. And this project probably will take at least an hour. Oh. And it's good, I want to say also, when you're doing a project like this, to have a nice long hook and be able to work at eye level so that everything is right there for you, you know? You really have to make your environment friendly okay. when doing projects like this. This is so wonderful. Thank you so very, very yes. much for showing us how to do this and for sharing your talents with us. Well, thank you, Mary, for coming. I love sharing all this information about succulents and every other plant. Funding for Prairie Yard and Garden is provided in part by Heartland Motor Company, providing service for over 30 years in the heart of truck country. Heartland Motor Company, we have your best interest at heart. Farmers Mutual Telephone Company and Federated Telephone Cooperative, proud to be powering a CIRA. Mark and Margaret Yako Jolene, in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHill.org